is chapter 8, all about loot. When you've got the right uh, gear lock showing on the screen, go up here and click on Draw Loot to draw a loot for that particular gear lock. It'll uh, show up in a loot box here. You can click on that loot and display its large image so you can see what it's all about. Remember, loot cards, uh, with the exception of uh, discovered and unlocked trove loot cards, uh, normal loot cards are single-sided, and therefore, by default, when you uh, when you click on a, on a uh, card and you view its large image, it will not be locked. So if you move the mouse away from the loot box, it'll just go away on you. If you want to lock it on the screen, click the image and then hit the L key. That will put a check mark in the lock box, and now, as you can see, I can move all about and uh, do whatever I want, and then when I'm done, click the box, uh, click the large image, and uh, it disappears. Alternatively, you can click on Draw Trove Loot. That will draw a Trove Loot card, and as you can see, that has a combination, 2-3-3, three, three, and uh, you can't, uh, you cannot uh, actually see the other side of this Trove Loot card until you crack this lock. Uh, now, if you want to give a loot card or a trove loot card to another gear lock, simply select it and then click on swap. Actually, make sure you don't uh, go off the screen here. Uh, so click on swap and then click the option button of the gear lock to whom you wish to give the, the loot or the trove loot. In this case, I'm giving Boomer the trove loot. Of course, it's still locked at 233. Um, if you want to, if you've cracked one of the locks through a, via pick lock uh, action, uh, and we'll talk more about that when we get into the recovery phase, um, you, uh, if you've cracked one of the locks, you'll see it uh, viewed like this, uh, X33. And cracking out to, to indicate that you've cracked a lot, you, to indicate that you've cracked one of the locks, you hold down the control key and you left click to open one of the locks. Similarly, if, uh, let's see if we draw a loot here. Uh, well, as long as I'm here, let me indicate that if you draw too much loot, uh, you will get a warning message about the fact that your loot is now in excess of the weight limit. Uh, and I wasn't getting what I was hoping for, so let me try again. There we go, that's better. Okay, so now I've got a gadget arm with two uses, and a treasure trove map with one use, a Zelfie root with a single use, and this uh, trove loot card that I, uh, one, uh, with where, where I cracked one of the locks. Now, if I crack another lock, control click, uh, that's great. And now, finally, if I crack the third lock, now we find out what it is, it's a Dex infuser. If I click it again, now we can see the uh, the other side of the card. And again, if you want to uh, keep that on the screen, L key to lock it. The uh, if you want to uh, you use the same keystroke if you want to indicate that you've used one of these loot cards. For example, this gadget arm has two uses. If I control click it, now it's down to one use. If I control click it again. Now it's down to no uses, and it disappears. So, uh, you can get the same result by right-clicking a loot card. If I right-click uh, the treasure trove map, uh, it will just be discarded. I can uh, right-click the Zelfie root card. That's discarded. And similarly, Dex Infuser, even though it's permanent, I can right-click it and discard it. And voila, I've got no more loot left for Boomer. Should the need arise, you can give... Uh, you can assign a specific piece of loot if for some reason you're indicated, uh, it's indicated by an encounter or something else. You can assign a specific piece of loot to a, um, uh, to a gear lock. Now, if the gear lock doesn't have any loot currently, then you need to right click on the prep area so that the loot box will get displayed. Because by default, the, if a gear lock doesn't have any loot, that box goes away. So if I right click, now I've got the loot box displayed. And if you control right click, 
And I wonder if this actually indicates, well, we can't actually see it. Uh, but if you control right click, and this is going to be true of all lists, and I'll, I'll talk more about that in a second, but control right click brings up a list of all loops. And now I can actually say, hey, I want to give uh, the maximizer stem to Boomer. So you just uh, select that and double click. And now Boomer has the maximizer stem. That's a trove loop card with a combination of 411. So um, he's going to have to crack that lock uh, to get it. And if you just want to give it to him immediately, obviously, you can just control click, control click, control click. And of course, now he has it. Um, the reason I, uh, so this control, let me get rid of this message, the control right click um, um, key, keystroke that allows you to bring up a list works with other list boxes. For instance, the Tyrant Army list. I can't imagine an, an, a time when you would actually have to assign a specific baddie to that, uh, to that list, but if you had to, you can just control right click that list. It brings up a list of baddies, and you could say, okay, I want the Goblin Rioter to be there. And I double-click it, and now I've got a Goblin Rioter in the Tyrant Army list. Now, because I custom-selected a Goblin Rioter, that card, the, the program went through the baddie stack for one-point baddies, and it removed the... Um, uh, it removed the Goblin Rioter if it found it from that stack. Now remember, this Goblin Rioter, for example, is uh, is uh, that I forget that with that yellow. Is that an orc or a troll? Can't remember uh, that the yellow icon there. But keep in mind that Momesh wouldn't. Not, the Goblin Rioter isn't even part of the deck. So again, you can sort of break the rules of the game here by assigning a particular type of baddie or getting a particular type of baddie added to a list that you otherwise wouldn't see for a particular tyrant. Um, and similarly, uh, I suppose you could, even though there's only one maximizer stem in the in the uh, tr trove loop deck, uh, I suppose I can come back here and say, let's give them another maximizer stem. And the program's not going to complain about that. Just crack the lock again. And now he's got two maximizer stims. So, again, you can sort of, you wouldn't normally do this. This is sort of just, uh, I mean, why play the game if you're just going to break the rules? But uh, uh, the capability is there specifically should the need arise to assign a specific uh uh, I mean, let's uh, let's say you accidentally uh, right-clicked and, and took away uh, Boomer's uh, Maximizer stem. Well, the way to get it back is to right-click, get the loot box to show up if it's not already showing, and then just simply right-click. And that's one way to undo a mistake of that nature. Though <laughs> There are easier ways, which I'll talk about shortly. Well, well I'll talk about near the end of the, uh, of the playlist. Now, let's say the situation arises where you're instructed to uh, draw two loot cards for a particular gear lock, and then uh, get to ch you get to choose which one you want to keep, and you then discard the other. Well, that's very simple. You simply draw loot twice, pick the one you want to keep, and then right-click the one you don't want to keep. Now, even if you're full of, let's say you've uh, gotten more loot than you could possibly hold, uh, and that might, uh, well, you get this message, like I said. Now, in this case, uh, let's see, the skinning knife, I thought, um, let's, uh, let's, let me, uh, let me right, control right click, and what's a good one, the uh, reinforced buckler. The reinforced buckler is an example of a heavy loot, so that, that counts as being three loot. And remember, the weight limit is four. So even if I, in this case, delete, let's say, the skinning knife, I'm going to continue to get this warning message about keep discarding. So, for example, if I already had four loot and then I drew the reinforced buckler, I would have to discard three cards if I wanted to hold on to that the reinforced buckler. Uh, because you do have to stay uh, at that limit or below. Now, of course, this is only a warning message on the screen, so as long as you're willing to put up with the warning uh, message, 
uh, you can continue to have more loot than you're allowed to hold. Uh, Nugget, remember Nugget is a gear lock, and I don't have Nugget as one of the gear locks here, but Nugget it, it specializes in loot. So every time uh, a Nugget draws a loot card, she actually gets the choice of two, um, or she gets to draw one extra loot uh, over and above whatever the instructions tell her to do. Um, and uh, in that particular case uh, for Nugget, the program automatically handles her. So when you click on draw loot for Nugget, it actually automatically gives you a list box of two loot cards or three loot cards, whatever the case may be. And then you can select double click on the one you want to keep. Uh, and then the other ones will just get discarded. So that in that case, it's automatic. But even, if, uh, you know, regardless, you can always draw as many loot cards as you want and then discard whatever you don't want. All you're doing is uh, removing cards from the deck that might otherwise be valuable uh, for other gear locks. I don't, I think that's pretty much it. Loot, loot is not a very complicated subject. Uh, there is one other list where... Uh, where control right clicking will it is actually quite important, uh, and that will be coming up probably in the next video. Um, otherwise, uh, mixed berries are used up, and we're done with this video. It's pretty simple. See you next time.